You are with David House of Saving Health Ministries. And on our broadcast today, we're going to be studying the second witness for the fact that there will be four stages of the Sunday Law. For those of you that have attended previous studies or watched previous videos that we've examined the fact that Medo-Persia is a foreshadowing or is a prophetic nation of America. Matter of fact, when we turn to Revelation 13 and verse 11, notice what the Bible says here and how the only other place we find a two-horned beast is in Medo-Persia. Now we've shown in a previous video how Medo-Persia is a type of America and how Medo-Persia issued four decrees to rebuild the temple. And when we consider Daniel 8, where there was a prophecy given that gave both the close of probation for God's people and the cleansing of the sanctuary, both were based upon the same prophecy. Let me repeat, in Daniel 8 and 9, we have a prophecy given concerning the 2300 days. And in that prophecy, you have the close of probation for the Jews and the cleansing of the sanctuary. Therefore, history must repeat itself at this time in earth's history for God to cleanse the temple and close probation upon commandment keepers, upon those that are seventh day Adventists. It must be based upon one prophecy. Therefore, it is the mark of the beast prophecy that identifies the close of probation for God's people and the cleansing of the sanctuary. But before we get too far along in our study, let us invite the Spirit of God to be our teacher as we compare Scripture with Scripture. Let us pray. Loving Father, we thank you so much for life and the light that you are sending forth in your word at this time in our history. Lord, we are not worthy to come before thy throne, but we come in Christ's name, knowing that this prayer is heard because of his righteousness. Please. Endow us with thy Holy Spirit. Teach us the bread of heaven. May we receive manna today. May we be fed and say that we have heard the word of the Lord. We thank you for blessing us with your presence. Now, please speak to us, speak to our hearts and convert us as we study prophecy. May we truly see Jesus in his name. We ask these blessings. Amen. Revelation chapter 13 brings to view a significant angle of the four Sunday laws that are coming. Notice what it says. Revelation 13 and verse 11, the Bible says, And I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon. Here, America is identified as a two-horned beast. And the only other place where we find a two-horned beast in Scripture is in Daniel 8. Therefore, we're seeing Medo-Persia there as a two-horned beast. And when we consider the fact that there are four similarities between America and Medo-Persia, God is foreshadowing the fact Whatever Medo-Persia does, America will do. Therefore, as we study Medo-Persia, Medo-Persia is a prophecy of America. Now, we've studied that. I'm not going to get into all the details of that because we've studied that before numerous times. For those of you that haven't, we'll put the link in the description box below for the four stages of the Sunday law as we studied Medo-Persia. You had the decree of Cyrus, the decree of Darius, the decree of... Artaxerxes, and the decree of Ahasuerus. The three decrees, the first three decrees were to restore and to rebuild Jerusalem. And then the fourth decree was the death decree against the Jews. So those four decrees foreshadow the four Sunday laws that are coming, the four decrees of Sunday. Now, we know that Medo-Persia, two-horned beast, America, the two-horned beast. Medo-Persia issued a religious death penalty in Daniel 6. America will issue a religious death penalty. We see that in Revelation 13, 15. Medo-Persia followed literal Babylon in chronology, in Bible prophecy, and America followed spiritual Babylon in chronology and Bible prophecy. 
also Medo-Persia is referred to as the glorious kingdom and America is described as the glorious land. That's Esther 1 and Daniel 11 for those two references. So we've studied those things before. We're not going to recover that. If you haven't seen it, we have the link. You see the video on the screen of when the SDA church gave all that money for the building. We covered that study of the four stages of the Sunday law. Again, the link will be in the description box. So in light of now going to a second witness, and why do we need a second witness? Because the Bible says, in the mouth of two or three witnesses shall every word be established. So considering the fact that we have examined that there are four stages of a Sunday law via Medo-Persia, but the Bible says that America, the lamb-like beast, will speak as a dragon, and we know that while the dragon represents Satan, it also represents pagan Rome, because it was pagan Rome that sought to slay Jesus Christ at his birth. And Revelation 12 brings to view that the dragon is also pagan Rome because they slaught to devour the child as soon as it was born. Talking about Christ, when Herod issued the decree to kill all the baby boys. So when we consider America will speak as a dragon, whatever pagan Rome did in issuing a Sunday law, America will follow suit. And that is the second witness of foreshadowing. We need to go into the history of what pagan Rome did that we may understand what America will do in the future. So consider Constantine issued a Sunday law in 321. And we need to understand the events surrounding that. And I want to thank my brother, Alan, in Uganda, who helped with some of the details regarding this in respect of the historical nature of the Sunday laws that were passed in pagan Rome. So notice the first Sunday law that Rome passed on March the 7th, AD 321. It says, Sunday must be kept sacred on the 7th of March, AD 321. The Rome Emperor Constantine the I passed the following Sunday law. On the venerable day of the sun, let the magistrates and people residing in cities rest, and let all workshops be closed in the country. However, persons engaged in agriculture may freely and lawfully continue their pursuits, because it often happens that another day is not so suitable for grain sowing or for vine planting, lest by neglecting the proper moment for such operations, the bounty of heaven should be lost. So this is the first Sunday law that was issued by Rome. And again, it does not have to happen in the exact fashion that it happened in Rome. That's not what I'm saying, that it's going to happen in the exact same way, in the exact same Sunday laws. But what I want you to see here, that there are four decrees given in Rome. And as you see these four decrees, it is a confirmation it is a second witness that we will see four decrees given in america and that is the overall picture that god is showing us here in our study now we can clearly see that just as constantine issued a law that all the businesses and shops be closed on sunday we see history repeating itself in the fact that Constantine also stated that he had a vision and he was told or he heard that by this you will conquer, talking about the cross. And we see the same thing happening with Kanye West, how he's come out with a song entitled Closed on Sunday. And we know that as Chick-fil-A has all its stores that are closed on Sunday, he made reference to Chick-fil-A in the song, and this is a foreshadowing of what is coming, programming the people through the Babylonian music to bow to Sunday observance. Also, Kanye West stated that he had a vision, and this is like a repeat of what Constantine did. So clearly we see that soon all the businesses and all the shops in America will be closed on Sunday. Now, am I saying that that will be the first decree? No, I am not stating that. Please do not add to my words. But it is important to note that there will be a closure 
of all the businesses on Sunday. Exactly what decree that happens, only God knows. But history is showing itself to be repeated by what we see in pagan Rome will soon happen in America. And this is being prophesied through the word of God, which shows us that we can trust the word of God, especially when we see these things come to pass, that we should have no reason to doubt or believe what God can do in the miracles that he can perform in our lives, we must come to trust the word of God. And this is why Bible prophecy is so vital to the believers of those that are professors of followers of Christ. Jesus said in John 13 and verse 19, Now I tell you before it come, that when it is come to pass, ye may believe that I am he. We can believe on Jesus because of prophecy. And this is the purpose of prophecy is to build your faith. And so that the day star Jesus Christ might arise in our hearts, that Christ in you, the hope of glory might be experienced. The mystery of godliness might be completed and finished in you, that God may seal us in obedience to his word. This is what prophecy is about. It's about conversion. It is about becoming a new creature. It is about becoming like Jesus. So let us move on to the second step of our study in the fact that the second decree was given in the year 364. Notice here what it says. The true Sabbath must not be kept. That's basically what the second decree stated in AD 364, the council of Laodicea, a regional synod of approximately 30 clerics from Asia minor declared in its 29th canon, Christians shall not Judaize and be idle on Saturday, but shall work on that day. But the Lord's day, they shall specially honor and as being Christians, shall, if possible, do no work on that day. If, however, they are found Judaizing, they shall be shut out from Christ. So this is taken, you see the reference there. So, brothers and sisters, we're seeing the decrees that were given in Rome were stating that you were not to worship on the Sabbath. And this is exactly what Pharaoh did by preventing God's people from worshiping on the Sabbath and they were not able to keep the feast. And we know that the Sabbath, in essence, is a feast. But it was not one of the feasts that were nailed to the cross. Because it is the supreme feast when you consider the feast of the Lord. And when we understand the fact that there are seven feasts, and we know that God has given us the seventh day to keep holy, which is a foreshadowing or a warning to those that refuse to honor the seventh day when the mark of the beast is enforced they will feel the seven last plagues just as pharaoh who rejected the ten commands the ten commandments of the lord to let the people go he felt the ten plagues that god sent history always repeats and these numbers are not by chance god is trying to show us the importance of obedience to his law and this can only happen by the indwelling of jesus christ as one yields and surrenders 100 percent to christ christ comes in and lives out his life through them as they surrender to him that is the key to success in the christian walk Yes, of course, we must pray. Yes, of course, we must study the word of God. Yes, of course, we must meditate and consider the teachings of Christ. But when we understand, the heart must be surrendered because you can go through all the formalities. But if the heart is not yielded to Christ, it is in vain. So we have examined the second decree that prevented the worship of the Lord on the Sabbath the honoring of the true Sabbath, which is Friday sundown until Saturday sundown. So just as it was prevented in the days of Rome, likewise in America, the worship of the Lord on the Sabbath will be prevented 
in America. You will not be allowed to honor the Sabbath. Matter of fact, they will probably try to get you to work on God's holy day. And so we are living in serious times. And if we are not walking by faith now, if we are not developing that walk with Christ to trust him and to know him as a personal savior, having experimental religion, not just a form of godliness. If we have not cultivated this trust in this faith in Christ in this time of peace, you cannot develop that in a time of trouble or in a time of chaos when trouble is coming upon the earth unlike anything we've ever seen. Brothers and sisters, perilous times are ahead. Now let us come over to our third Sunday law that was issued by Rome. So now let us come over to the third decree that was issued in Rome. Here it says, anyone who disobeys is a heretic. So that was the declaration under the third Sunday law. It says on the 27th of February, AD 380, the Sunday movement was reinforced by Theodosius I, Gratian, and Valentinian. And this we're seeing a threefold union. Just as Revelation 16 tells us that when Sunday's enforced under one of those decrees, we're going to see a threefold union Hence, we are already beginning to see the workings of such a union when you talk about the dragon, the beast, and the false prophet. We know that the dragon is primarily spiritualism. The false prophet, you're talking about apostate Protestantism, which the majority are referred to as evangelicals today. And then you have the beast who represents Roman Catholicism. And what does God say to those who are among those groups, he says, come out of her, my people. God is calling his people out of Babylonian worship, out of confusion into his truth. This is what the Lord is doing at this hour under the message that is to lighten the earth with his glory, which is to give strength and power to the third angel's message. God is using his servants, using his children, using brothers and sisters to share the light of the third angel's message to call God's children out from Babylon. Therefore, those who are uniting with Babylon cannot be preaching the message of the hour. Again, those who are uniting with Babylon, with apostate Protestants, with the beast, they are not giving the third angel's message, though they may say the third angel's message in their speeches, in their talks. We need to have eye salve, brothers and sisters, to understand just because somebody says the third angel's message out of their mouth doesn't mean they are giving the third angel's message. Let us have our eyes open spiritually to recognize that those who are uniting with the whore are not giving the message of the hour. It is a deception. They are telling you one thing and doing another. Be careful. Let us come back to the decree. It says, These men jointly issued the Edict of Thessalonica, which stated that anyone who did not adhere to the Catholic faith was a heretic. It goes on to say, We authorize the followers of this law to assume the title of Catholic Christians. But as for others, since in our judgment they are foolish madmen, we decree that they shall be branded with ignominious name of heretics and shall not presume to give to their conventicles the name of churches. This was printed in the Theodosian Code, Book 16, Title 1, Law 2. And for those of you that don't know what the Theodosian Code is, that was in a compilation of laws that were given in Rome. And we're seeing they brought to view Sunday enforcement by law. So this was a law that branded those who do not bow to Catholicism as heretics. Now, when you consider the definition of the word heretic, it says a person believing in or practicing religious heresy. It says a dissident, a dissenter, a nonconformist. 
it goes on to say, a person holding an opinion at odds with what is generally accepted. When we consider Sunday versus the true Sabbath, we know that those who are honoring Friday sundown until Saturday sundown are seen at odds with what is generally accepted in Sunday observance. So we will be branded as heretics, as dissenters of law, as opposers of law and order when we are simply obeying what the Bible says. This is why the Lord says in 2 Timothy chapter 3 and verse 12, Yea, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Brothers and sisters, this is what is coming for God's people, for you and I, if we are faithful to Christ in his word. Notice here what it says in the headline. It says, more than 170 Houston hospital workers suspended over refusing vaccine. The employees will be fired after two weeks if they don't get vaccinated. Brothers and sisters, America is speaking as a dragon and totalitarian government doesn't just have to be by a law, but it can be your employer. And understand, this is why we are at a time where self-employment will be advantageous for God's people or having your own business, being self-employed so that you do not have to bow to the mandates of man. And for those that have jobs and that are working for others, you will be placed in a position where they will try to force you to do things that are contrary to the Bible and to take this vaccine. It is contrary to God's word. This is sorcery is what we're seeing in this vaccine that is being administered at large. The article goes on to say that more than 170 healthcare workers at a Houston, Texas hospital were reportedly suspended for two weeks without pay this week for choosing to not get the coronavirus jab by the hospital's Monday deadline, which the hospital requires of its workers. The employees will be fired after the two weeks if they don't get the jab. Now, I will add that in the article, it mentions that the hospital gave exemptions to 285 employees for religious and medical reasons, and 332 received deferrals, including for pregnancy. About 117 employees filed a lawsuit against the hospital last month, claiming the employer can't force employees to get the experimental vaccine. That will be interesting to see how it plays out in court. Brothers and sisters, perilous times are ahead for God's people. Now's the time to be willing to suffer for Christ as we stand upon truth. Things are not going to get better for us. They are simply going to get worse for those that stand for truth. And since we're talking about the jab, notice here in this article what it says concerning four British Airways pilots dead following COVID-19 injections while Spain and Russia prohibit the vaccinated from air travel. Brothers and sisters, four British Airways pilots have died within one week after receiving the COVID jab. Brothers and sisters, need I say more? Why you should run from the jab? Remember, the test of defiling the temple came before the mark of the beast in Daniel's day, which means the test for defiling the temple is happening now, and soon the mark of the beast is going to be enforced. Run from the jab. Christ has purchased you by his blood. Your body does not belong to you. It belongs to God. Therefore, whatever God allows or ordains from his word that you may place within this body is what we should do. Let us come back to our study of these four Sunday laws that are issued by Rome. Let us examine step four. It says heretics banished from the empire. 
It says, Then on the 25th of July, A.D. 383, the Adocius I, Gratian, and Valentinian II, the same threefold union, made a law that denied right of assembly to any group of people that were branded as heretics. They were not allowed to own church buildings or large clusters of homes that might serve as a church. They were forbidden to fellowship together, both publicly and in private. Any heretics who transgressed this law by meeting or fellowshipping together were to be expelled from the empire. They were outcast. And this is what we will be in the future. It says, All persons whatsoever who are tossed about by the false doctrine of diverse heresies, namely the Eunomians, the Arians, the Macedonians, the Numatomachi, the Manichaeans, the Encratites, Apotactites, the Sycophori, and the Hydroperistate, shall not assemble in any groups, shall not collect any multitude, shall not attract any people to themselves. No evangelism shall not show any walls of private houses after the likeness of churches and shall practice nothing publicly or privately which may be detrimental to the catholic sanctity furthermore if there should exist any person who transgresses what has been so evidently forbidden he shall be expelled by the common agreement of all good men and the opportunity to expel him shall be granted to all who delight in the cult and the beauty of the correct observance of religion brothers and sisters this is what is coming for us as we will be expelled we will be excommunicated we will be disfellowshipped we will be seen as outcast in society by our refusal to bow to Sunday observance. This will be our lot. So now that we have seen the four decrees from Rome regarding Sunday, we're getting a confirmation, a second witness of the fact that there will certainly be four decrees of Sunday that will be issued in America. We saw that already in Medo-Persia, but now the Lord has sent forth more light concerning this fact of four decrees of Sunday. Now, when we consider the signs of the times and what is prophetically happening at this time in reference to Sunday, notice what Pope Francis is calling for the organizing of workers' unions in light of the fact that we know that prophecy says that unions will be a part of bringing upon this world a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation. It says, Pope Francis advocates for organization of workers' unions. Of what? Workers' unions. What did the servant of the Lord write regarding workers' unions? They will play a major role in enforcing Sunday, and we've already seen that historically in 1888 as the labor unions played a role in pushing for Sunday rest. The article goes on to say, Pope Francis is championing the right of all workers to unionize as economic activity is poised to increase when the pandemic threat eases. The pontiff stressed the needs of the most vulnerable workers, including migrants, in a video message Thursday to participants at a conference organized by the International Labor Organization, a United Nations agency based in Geneva. So again, this global agenda is being pushed. United Nations is behind this one. Francis said efforts to rebuild economies after COVID-19 setbacks must aim at a future with decent and dignified working conditions originating in collective bargaining. He called the right to organize in unions one of the fundamental protections for workers. And what will one of those fundamental protections for workers be? That they should rest on Sunday. 
the mark of the beast will soon be enforced. The third angel's message will soon swell into a loud cry. Notice who will be visiting the Vatican next week. It says, Biden's top diplomatic aide headed to the Vatican next week. It goes on to say, on Friday, the U.S. State Department confirmed a European tour for U.S. Secretary of State Antony Blinken next week that will include stops in Italy and the Vatican, where he is expected to meet with top Vatican officials. According to the State Department's June 18th communique, Blinken's tour will last from June 22nd to the 29th. He will first visit Berlin, Paris before coming to Italy, making stops in Rome, the Vatican, Berry, and Matera. And what will they be discussing when he meets at the Vatican? They will be discussing religious freedom. They will be discussing climate change. Brothers and sisters, we know Regarding both of those issues, this talk of religious freedom will culminate in Sunday observance. Pope Francis has already written in his encyclical Laudato Si stating that Sunday, like the Jewish Sabbath, is a part of the solution for climate change. As you see there on the screen from his encyclical, brothers and sisters, Sunday is the mark of the authority for the Catholic Church. But the Bible says that Saturday is the Sabbath. Notice this short clip from Rome reports regarding that the U.S. Secretary of State, currently in the Biden administration, will be visiting the Vatican. Let's watch the clip. Following the U.S. Special Climate Envoy John Kerry's visit to the Pope, hmm. So Antony Blinken will become the second senior official from the Biden administration to travel to the Vatican. The U.S. Secretary of State will be in Europe from June 22nd to the 29th. In a press release, the U.S. State Department said he will meet with senior Holy See officials to underscore their shared commitment to freedom of religion or belief and tackling the climate crisis. It is likely he will meet with the Vatican Secretary of State, Cardinal Pietro Parolin, and with the Holy See's Secretary of Relations with States, Archbishop Paul Gallagher. In October, the former U.S. Secretary of State Mike Pompeo visited the Vatican, though he did not meet with Pope Francis. The visit may lead the United States to name a new ambassador to the Holy See, a role which has been vacant since January. So you see that the relationship between America and the Vatican has only been strengthening over the last few years. And now they are going to be discussing who will be the new U.S. ambassador to the Vatican. We know that Callista Gingrich was the most recent to serve in that role under the Trump administration. Brothers and sisters, prophecy is fulfilling and the first and second beast of Revelation 13 are uniting. And the question is, are we totally under the blood of Jesus? Are we sealed in obedience to his law? Now's the time for us to be surrendering to Christ whatever he says. Now, when we consider the fact that there are four, not one, not two, not three, but four Sunday laws that will soon be issued in America, the number four represents the universal whole. You have the four winds. You have the four corners of the earth. You have the fourth commandment. You have the fourth angel. The number four represents the universal whole in scripture. And let us see what God brings to view in a passage where he mentions the number four three times. Turn with me to Revelation chapter seven, beginning from verse one. Notice what the Bible says in Revelation seven, beginning from verse one. The Bible says, and after these things, I saw four angels, the number four, standing on the four corners of the earth, the number four, holding the four winds of the earth. Again, the number four. And the wind should not blow on the earth, nor on the sea, nor on any tree. Notice that the number four is mentioned three times. Four corners of the earth, the four winds, and the four angels. And we must understand that God is going to allow a third witness coming from America 
where four decrees regarding Sunday will be instituted. We've already seen four decrees from Medo-Persia. We've seen four decrees from pagan Rome. Now there will be four decrees from America regarding Sunday observance. And God has given us a second witness to confirm this truth. Now we know that the interpretation of verse 1 is not talking about decrees, but the number 4 signifies the universal whole is what I wanted to bring out from this verse. And God will not allow any of us to be hurt until we are sealed. But if we are not sealed, then the destruction will be the result of refusing the love of God by obeying his law. Notice what it says as we continue. Verse 2, and I saw another angel ascending from the east, having the seal of the living God, and he cried with a loud voice. What kind of voice? A loud voice. How does the first angel go forward? With a loud voice. How does the third angel go forward? With a loud voice. It says in verse 2, with a loud voice to the four angels to whom it was given to hurt the earth and the sea, saying, Hurt not the earth, neither the sea, nor the trees, till we have sealed the servants of our God in their foreheads. How many will God seal? Verse 4 tells us. And I heard the number of them which were sealed, and there were sealed a hundred and forty and four thousand of all the tribes of the children of Israel. One hundred and forty and four thousand will be sealed, a derivative of the number four. Again, the universal whole of God's last day remnant people. God is showing us a final work, a finished work in the earth by means of being sealed in obedience to his law. Where does he place that seal? in the forehead. You must make a decision for Christ that you are going to obey his law. What does he say in Isaiah 8 and verse 16? Bind up the testimony, seal the law among my disciples. And where does he want to put that law? In your mind and in your heart. Notice what he says in Hebrews chapter 8 and verse 10. The Bible says, for this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, saith the Lord, I will put my laws into their mind, that's the forehead, and write them in their hearts, and I will be to them a God, and they shall be to me a people. God is making it clear that he wants to write his law in our minds, that we might live in obedience to his will, in compliance with his word, becoming one with Christ. This is what it's about. As we prepare for the soon return of Jesus, are you at one with Christ? Have you been married to Jesus? Have you become one with him? Because the Bible says they twain shall become one flesh when they get married. Therefore, in a spiritual sense, the church, the bride, is to be married to Christ. Have you become one with Jesus? Have you put away sin? Have you allowed the indwelling of Christ to give you victory over sin as you choose to do his will on a daily basis? Are you surrendering to the voice of the Holy Spirit to work in you both to will and to do of God's good pleasure? Let us understand that the sacrifice that Jesus made upon Calvary for us is not greater than any sacrifice that we must make for him. Notice what happened at the cross when Jesus died. Now remember, when Jesus died at the hand of pagan Rome, who spake as a dragon, we're seeing a foreshadowing of what will happen at a time when America speaks as a dragon. Whatever happened, by the decree of pagan Rome will happen under the decree of America because America will speak as a dragon. Notice when a death decree was issued against Christ, what happened? The Bible says in Matthew 27 and verse 45 and 46, it says, Now from the sixth hour there was darkness 
over all the land unto the ninth hour. There was what? Darkness over the earth. In other words, there was a dark day. Then it says in verse 46, And about the ninth hour, Jesus cried with a loud voice, saying, Eli, Eli, lama sambachthani, that is to say, My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And we will feel as though we have been forsaken because of the trouble that God will allow to come upon us by our stance for the truth. Notice Jesus cried with a loud voice, just as it says in the first and third angel, a loud voice at a time where the day went dark. In other words, just as there was a decree against Christ to crucify him, when there is a decree to enforce Sunday in America, we will see darkness upon the land and the day will go dark. We already have two witnesses for this, both in Matthew 27 and when you compare Luke 21 verse 25 with Esther 3, 13 to the end of the chapter. God is letting us know that the day will go dark when Sunday is enforced. And as the Vatican and America are uniting, as we've seen in the current events, we know without a shadow of a doubt, we are on the verge of Sunday enforcement. And as we approach COP26, which is the climate change conference that is approaching towards the end of this year, we know the movements for Sunday enforcement are already here. Notice here what it says in the article from Vatican News. COP26, faith and science event to highlight efforts against climate crisis. It says the Vatican, Italy, and the United Kingdom are joining forces to host a pre-COP26 event showcasing the contribution faith and religion can make in combating climate change, at which Pope Francis will likely be present. So now the discussion between faith and science before COP26, which is to take place October 4th. The article goes on to say, the event which is organized by the UK's and Italy's embassies to the Vatican will see numerous faith leaders and scientists address the theme of climate change and the need for a coordinated effort to protect creation. A what? A coordinated effort to protect creation. No, brothers and sisters, God has called us to save souls, not the planet. So we're seeing much more of churches getting involved in regards to this issue of climate change. Sunday enforcement is at the door. Are we prepared to suffer for Christ's sake? Are we spending time in prayer, study, fasting, meditation upon the word of God that we might be sanctified by the word, taking time to examine ourselves to see whether or not we are truly in the faith? The day of investigative judgment is here, brothers and sisters. Now's the time for us to surrender all to Jesus. Will you Surrender all to Jesus today. Let us pray. Loving Father, we thank you for the word. And we thank you for the light that you are sending forth. Please help our unbelief. Help us to surrender to Jesus before it is too late. Help us to allow you to seal us in the truth that we may be settled and established enlightening others as a true witness of the gospel. We thank you for the word. Now save us, we pray. Deliver us from sin. In Jesus' name, we ask these blessings. Amen.